so we do this, I think that there's a, not just the, the home deployment and then other things. I think it's actually uh, the implication is uh, bigger, uh, perhaps, than the, what you can see on the surface. People are always ask to say, you people have been doing engine deployment and design and development for so many years. Uh, where is this thing going? When will that show up uh, in the platform? Cisco routers. I think that, uh, that's far as I know, all new, all new things do not start from the, from the core. It actually starts from the edge. Because that's what I saw when the IP first showed up. They showed up because someone wanted to run an IP. So that, uh, of course, there is the researchers doing the TCP research. But for the majority of the people in the early days of IP, they wanted the email. That's how they you know, installed the, the Unix uh, and started running TTPIP. So, so therefore, the, they think that those kind of edge deployment uh, as like a, are important. That's actually the most important uh, first step to get a new thing uh, deployed. So it's really the grassroots thing for any new things uh, to succeed. Uh, the only question is, are you useful? If you're useful, someone will, will, will download and uh, try it on. Uh, so home case is the uh, edge. Uh, application is the edge because uh, you're running the application as the edge. You can uh, just overlay, kind of over the existing uh, thing. Uh, especially for the IoT, the students about little cheap stuff, like a $5 each. So anyone can buy a dozen and start playing with it, uh, start contributing to uh, you know, learn about NDN and, and help us discover problems, uh, new, uh, the missing stuff, we can add it up. So if you want to ask the question, let's say you have a new architecture, don't you need to get it deployed in the core? Uh, uh, if yes, how do you even get into it? I already mentioned that uh, IP showed the way. I don't remember people ever worried about, you know, will ATT ever speak to support IP? That wasn't a question ever being asked. People get so much fun just uh, playing with the TCP IP, get your email, so you, you can also do the clumsy file transfer, uh, where you have to remember which uh, server you have to tap into, uh, and use the name, password, uh, etc. But uh, once people find something useful, they will just run applications. And the rest just happens automatically. Um, did the ATP wants to give up their service switch to move to IP? Not really. But then the question is, where the, the traffic is? Once you have a traffic, the rest you don't need to care. So that's what I learned by watching how IP got rolled out uh, for so many years. I think that's how NDN actually eventually will get rolled out. Now, so I have one collected question. You won't be able to read the name, but then you can tell this is from a colleague uh, from the Korea. It's the name. So the question is the following. Okay, you want to control your, your home AC um, from your office. Not how can I do it? Because we mentioned that each home you can have their unique names. This is how you can have your trust anchor, right? Trust anchor is the certificate, self-signed certificate, and you must have a name. It must be unique. Now the question is your, your office a mile away from the home. If you want to use your phone to send something, turn on the AC in the home, how would your say, interesting packet get, or get into the home? Assuming that your unique home prefix would not get announced to the, to the network. So uh, the answer is a very good question, actually. Very often, similar questions uh, got 
risk. So what how you solve that problem is depending on what's the situation. Like today, you only have your NDA running in the home, you have the tunnel to your home gateway. The internet doesn't know how to forward the NDA interest. But uh, if you assume one day that the NDA gets deployed, uh, still your home prefix probably wouldn't get injected into the global routing system. So how are you going to do it? Uh, we So NDN is designed with this uh, uh, optional field in the interest packet called the forwarding hint. Forwarding hint is exactly that. It's a hint. Tell the forwarders where to forward the interest. If the name carried in the interest, it is not in your forwarding table. So that's a forwarding hint. Uh, in this case, you can, your, your phone definitely not technically know your home gateway's um, names. So that gateway needs to have uh, some notable name that is from other places they know how to reach that home gateway. So that would be the forwarding name. And uh, the interest actually carries the real name that's targeted to your AC. So that's how I think this question could be handled. And just for information, so we actually have a little paper uh, published uh, early this year on this uh, note on the rapid scalability in the NDN. Uh, I just uh, quoted a couple paragraphs out of there to say that uh, you know for the IP, very, people, very often people argue uh, is the address uh, identifier. Uh, or the I address a locator. So because if it's a identifier, there can be a lot of identifiers and there's a scalability question. Uh, but if it's a locator, we're talking about IP address. If it's a locator, that basically means that your I address will be a sub block from your internet service providers. So when you move from provider one to provider two, you have to change your address. So there's a conflict in IP words, uh, the locator and the identifier situation. But uh, in the NDA, because of when you have this option of carrying the forwarding, you can think that the uh, NDA interest okay, could carry both. Uh, but the way there's a fundamental difference. The forwarding hint, like I said, is just a hint. Uh, the, the identifier, like is the name in the interest packet, is always visible. So, generally speaking, say if you have a retrieve piece of context, uh, the interest gets forwarded, but as long as if the router can find the data in its a content store, for example, it's going to return data right away. So the forwarding hint doesn't mean that the interest is all the way going through the application. Of course, in this particular case, um, you're sending a special command to your you see, uh, that interest is not going to hit that cache. So therefore, the interest packet will go all the way to the uh, home gateway. Home gateway. So the forming hint is, once you reach a place indicated by the forming hint, the hint will be dropped. And then uh, the interest will be forwarded based on the name carried in the interest. Uh, your home gateway will recognize that name and knows who can broadcast it to the home side of the Wi-Fi. That's the, the story. Uh, thank you very much for the of the question. I wish I had more questions. So can I have you uh, share my thoughts about the topic? I have another question. Yeah. Yeah. We use the phone meter. Uh, we need to uh, register the home prefix to the NDNS. But the, the, the prefix is just the local, has local NSS. So I, I wonder how. That's another good question. So where do you get information for the forwarding hint? In this particular example, you see that you don't need any NDNS per se because you, you know your, your home gateway. Okay. So uh, there are situations where you may need to do a lookup. So NDNS is NDNS. 
uh, equivalent could be used to do that lookup. But uh, we have looked at the several uh, application scenarios. I think it's really depending on application. Uh, in other cases, it's also that the application actually knows the folding it one way or the other, so without having to do a lookup. I remember one of the, the application cases when we were doing this uh, uh, the mobile house, uh, M house, uh, with the professor Jeff Brook, uh, where your phones, you know, carrying your uh, exercise information, how many, how many steps you, you walk, you run, and then you want to uh, upload to some secure storage. To, where your information gets saved. So uh, in that case, whatever your storage service need to actually reach your phone to fetch the data. Of course, your phone won't inject this prefix into the global routing system. So there's a similar situation, uh, right? But in this case, it is the phone that initiates the request for upload. Say, hey, you have enough data, I need to do upload. So the phone doesn't send the first uh, packet out. And in that uh, packet, in the interest packet, you have to carry your, your current phone uh, hint information so that the storage server could use that as a phone hint and fetch data from the phone. So there's another example to say that uh, the phone hint can be learned by other means then uh, do not look up. Of course, look up is always, is always the high option. Has, has the concept of a knack been removed from the, the, well, the thin list? Is it, is it, has the knack been removed? Uh, by knack, you mean uh, knack to f management? Or is a uh, network access control? Or net based access? I'm so sorry, the knack has multiple oh, okay. so <laughs> incarnations. Oh, okay, so basically once once an interest goes down, then it says, no, we've got nothing like this, and it sends a knack backstream, uh, 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 um, knack downstream, and says, you know, just kill all of these things. Um, kill all of these interests and depending interests. Okay. That's what I mean by it. I see, I see, I see. Uh, I think that's it, uh, that one is under discussion. Okay. Clearly, the, at least the, uh, should I say the current implementation of NAC? Unless we have made a change. I, I think uh, the, the early implementation, the, the one implementation of the NAC, and, uh, that isn't exactly correct. Because like you mentioned, if uh, I send interest out and receive a negative, negative acknowledgement, I may just uh, kill the interest. Uh, yeah, so this is right, 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 right. So, so I think that's a little absolute. Right. Um, the, but the, the intention of a negative acknowledgement, merely to say that me as a forwarder, I cannot do it, cannot help you, sorry. So the recipient of the NAC actually should uh, make a decision on what you should do. And it is not that, that you know, just give up, throw mm -hmm. your hands and kill it. This is the implementation. There's no, there's no problem with that. The, this, I think this implementation of... Uh, no, what we have is a, a very... What is desired in certain cases is uh, that interest is not being killed. It's not about NAC, it's just the heaven... That's the what I'm saying, no. how to handle NAC. But it's not about NAC, it's about the state. So the fact that someone can decide that they can handle it, that's, that's, that, that's the issue. So what we... With the implementation, what we have is under assumption if you don't know how to forward this interest for, or further, or you don't know, uh, don't have the data, you give up. So that's the core of the problem, not the NAC itself. It's just that every stage, uh, what we have today is uh, at some destination where that the interest reached, uh, the router had no ability to do anything to this one. So it gave up, but this saying just Okay, I have no idea. You decide what you want to do, and send your NAC backwards, wherever downstream. And that downstream, there is a decision. There's still a decision that it may try additional destinations if it has enough enough 
entries in a trip. And if it eventually exhausts all the options, it will decide that it cannot handle this one and will effectively propagate backwards. So all of it is not problem of NAC per se, but rather the problem of uh, uh, decision of giving up. So uh, if we have re if we redefine the when we uh, giving up, then we're just not going to send NAC at that point. But NAC is simply to clean up the state if you define if you decide to give up of sending state, give up the interest. I think we more or less agree. I would, I would just say that, you know, if I as a forwarder cannot help, um, I should notify my pre previous notes just to inform. So the, the, I agree with Alex. Uh, the question is, the key question is really the recipient of the bag. How you react to it? If you react in a simplified, I mean, simple-minded way, just to give up and further kill the the interest, that's probably not the right thing to do. But I think the feedback, it seems to me, is always a useful thing rather than silence. Like, you, know, you report whatever your status, uh, it's always a helpful information. So, no, but isn't that like error codes in TCP IP pipelines? Like you have to have you know, some failure or something, and so you get flooded with error codes. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not too familiar with the fact, but I believe my error codes were removed from TCP. I think it's maybe some, in some senses, maybe that could be like that scenario, could be like positive, uh, positive, 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 well, which could mislead, misdirect execution. We need something uh, in the same way as ICMP is intended to prevent the same failure from happening over and over again, right? You've got to have some way to propagate. Don't try this again because it's not going to succeed the next time either. Right? That's the way I think about that. And if it gets all the way back to the, I mean, there's no reason it shouldn't propagate all the way back to the to the originator of the interest, right? But but uh, it really depends on the scenario. So you know whether you're referring to a specific scenario or not. So there are cases of the ad hoc activity where the decision of giving up you cannot make it. Like you, you may not be able to. I'm sorry, you have to be able. If, if I'm the application at the beginning, okay, I, I have to right. If there's an origin of the interest, and there has to be a way to know. Gee, this isn't going to work. Right? Uh, I have to fail or something. Okay, so if we're talking about the ad hoc scenario, but ad hoc vehicular scenario, in those cases, if you receive interest and you don't have the data and you don't know how to forward this interest further right now, it doesn't mean that you need to give up. So you, because you may be able to have this data in 15 microseconds, 5 seconds, maybe or so forth, and if uh, someone's still interested in that data that has been requested, so it may keep this interest for some, some amount of time. So that's why I said the definition of giving up not always uh, simple to make. Okay, I don't disagree with that statement, but there has to be an option that says, okay, I'm, I'm done, right? You can't, I don't think you can say okay, that so in all situations there's no, no option to give up. Yes. Which is what I thought you were saying, so I, I may have misunderstood. I and mean, I agree with you that they, there should be a way to say, if you give up, you should be able to say that. So this is what NAC is, yeah. and that's what I was saying, that NAC, is, no NAC itself is not a problem. Yeah. It's a, okay. it's a, the fact of what you say with this map. So, so like in, in, in programming language theory, there are certain languages like data flow programming languages. You have the concept of an observable error, not an observable error, uh, error. And in those languages, for example, modes are hard. The, the correct thing to do is wait. Just wait. And it could be, I don't know, forever really long. But that makes it more difficult to keep up. I, I think that uh, there are two situations. The one is the network, and one is uh, the application. Uh, the application always decides whatever they, they want to do. Nobody should uh, say one way or the other in absolute forms. Uh, 
the network uh, should, I think, that really give the best uh, effort trying. But then there is a few keep trying. I think this is uh, the end of uh, this tutorial. And uh, we really appreciate people's interest uh, in this topic. And thank you very much. And thank you for all the questions and discussions. Uh, do you uh, send more questions to our way if you can think of more or whatever, uh, feedback? Anything we would highly appreciate. Thank you very much. <laughs>